Do you not know that there are brilliant, intelligent people with great education and, and great jobs making a whole lot of money in prison? Don't assume that having an education and having a good job or having a, a business somehow makes them successful in life. Success in life is not based on what you have. All it's right. based on what you can give. Yes. Right. And so the child of God has to understand that the first battle you got to deal with is the fear of living inside of a world of people who don't know God. Right. And being pulled and drawn back and forth by the imagery inside this world that tells you what you are and what you're supposed to be. The first thing a child of God has to overcome is the fear of being drawn in into a world that controls your thinking. And that's why you got to watch everything that you, every song you hear, every person you hang out with, every show on TV. you got to constantly be aware there are dangers around you bombarding you. The fight is fought in your mind. And so the first thing you got to deal with is getting to a place where the world does not dominate and control all your thoughts. And if you can't make it to worship, but in and in and, and get on a Sunday morning, feel like an overburden some job for you, and read the Bible, it's something you just can't get into, and sing your songs of praise for God. Oh, I just get tired of the songs. I want to hear a little, I want a little usher, you know, I need a little bit of, I need a little bit of, uh, a little, little, uh, 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 sit back. <laughs> A little way. <laughs> you got to get to a place where the world's not pulling on you. Yeah. Now, once you get to a place the world doesn't pull on you, there's a second battle you have. Mm. When you're added to the family of God, I told Brother, Brother, Brother Middleton, I said, bro, when you get in the body, the first thing happens, the first agenda the devil has is to keep you out of the church. Yep. Yep. And now, for some of y'all, he's uh, successful. <laughs> His first agenda is make sure you don't get in. Yeah. If for a chance you make the decision to get in, his second agenda is to snatch you back out. Yep. And he will use anything. I, I've seen folk get baptized, get added to the family of God, and they praise the Lord. I'm in the family of God. And guess what happened? I got that job and waiting for us. Praise God. I got the I got it to church. I got a job. And I gotta work on Sundays now and Wednesday. So I ain't got, I can't come to church for a while. Y'all pray for me because because I, I I'm about to leave the Lord. His first agenda, once you get in, is to get you back out. And I want you to realize the moment he got in, the first thing happened, the, the, the third the first agenda of the devil is to not get you in. Second agenda is to snatch you up once you get in. And third, if he can't snatch you up once you get in, his third agenda is make you a devil while you are in. Okay, I can't get you out of here? Fine. Let me use you while you're up in there. Because his agenda is to make sure that somebody is going to stumble and fall because he has you working on his side. Peter, how could Peter make this mistake? Peter was impulsive. And therefore, he could slip back and forth at a moment without notice. You can grow, you got to grow to the place where outsiders don't bother you. But next of all, you got to grow to the place where insiders don't bother you. See, see what happens is once you get inside the family, t tell somebody, look, look, tell somebody, thank God for your freedom. Thank God for your freedom. Fear will destroy your freedom. And fear will lead to your fall. Look at the text again. He pulls out this lesson. Look at the text again. Galatians 1, 2. Here what he says, verse number 12. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. When the king withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who are of the, of the circumcision, and the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him. The devil pulled Peter, and that pulled others. You see, there's a danger of who you connect to. If you're not strong, there are folk. First, you've got to fight the battle of folk down in the church. And when you're getting, you've got to fight the battle of the folk that's in the church. 
I was uh, preaching moved to, to Scumbia, Alabama, and had been talking to a brother who actually initially talked with us and, and uh, uh, got us to, we came, moved there to Alabama and began working with the church there. He pulled me aside, an older brother, one day said, Brother Hubbard, uh, you're a young man, you know, and, and uh, I'm looking out for your family. He said, listen, he said, everybody, everybody in this church ain't, ain't right. He said, I just want you to know everybody here ain't right, and, and they got some folk you need to look out for, and, and some folk will do you wrong. You can't trust everybody. You can't hang with everybody. And so I, I'm going to help you, help you, but look out for them. Only for me to discover some years later, he was talking about himself. <laughs> Because you see, you see, people like to control you. Amen. Amen. There are some folk who even say, now, now, here I thought we was free. See, but 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 now, now, you know I got an issue with baby. And I saw you talking to him. I heard y'all was hanging out together, you know, and man, but if you gonna be with Obey, then I ain't gonna get sweet, and you know. No friend of mine. It's going to be a friend, a little bit. <laughs> you, you know that happened in the church? Sometimes, sometimes I will, sometimes our, our sweet sisters, <laughs> sometimes some sweet sisters say, you know, uh, I ain't never liked her. <laughs> I, I, I ain't never liked her, you know, just something about, I like, I don't, I don't like, I don't like how she walk. <laughs> yeah, I don't like how she dress. You know, I don't like how she look, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't like her. You know, what you think about her? Well, I, I guess she's right, she got some issues. Yeah, she got issues. <laughs> you know she got issues, y'all got issues. And if we friends, both of us can't stand her. Now, uh, if you if you ain't my, you gonna be like a friend. If you ain't my friend. My friends don't hang with them kind of folk. There are people in the church who will pull you down the wrong path. Who will put their energy in trying to make you make somebody else your enemy. The Bible says the Bible says says that if you have an art with your brother. You go to them. Matthew, Matthew 18 identifies that, that, we, that you, the reality is if there's a problem you have with somebody, you have an obligation to go talk to them and say, I've got an issue with you. we got to work this out. You're not supposed to go around talking to everybody else about, I, I don't like that. Man. That don't make no kind of sense. God is looking at the relationship he put inside his family. He doesn't want anybody to break the connection that God made. Matter of fact, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, Proverbs rather, that God hates, God hates, God hates the sowing of seed of discord among brethren. But you don't know what they've done. You don't know what they've done to me. You don't know how. Baby, let me tell you something. Everybody done hurt somebody. All right. Now you might have amnesia. You can't. I, 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 I ain't nobody ever been hurt by me. I have. Everybody has always loved me. They, everybody loves me. They never. Nobody. I've never hurt a soul. Nobody's ever been mad at me. I say, even Jesus hurt folk. The moment you get into the family of God. There are some folk are going to get hurt. But I want you to realize that Peter, Peter's fall affected us. There's two, two, two difficulties, two challenges, two tragedies from Peter's fall. First of all, first one is it, it made him a hypocrite. Paul said, Paul said, Peter, Peter the apostle Peter became a hypocrite. Reason I don't go to church. All them hypocrites in the church. They got hypocrites everywhere. As one preacher said, I I'd rather spend all my, I'd rather come to the service, I'd rather worship God every week and give God all I 
have, because if I've got a choice, I'd rather spend some of my time with some of the hypocrites now than lose my soul and spend all my time with all the hypocrites later. Yes, sir. I want to challenge you. You can't allow people that sow discord to exist around you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about it. It ain't my fault. I don't call nobody with no mess. I don't call nobody with no mess. I don't know why everybody want to call me up and tell me that mess. But you know, I don't call nobody. I say, well, you know, we ought not to be talking like this. I may laugh a little bit and joke, but, but really, I don't want to be a part of all that kind of mess. I don't know why they want to call me up. Because baby, if you're a garbage can, put people with garbage inside you. All right, man. I was preaching in Port Arthur, to that a member in Port Arthur, Texas, and I recall one Sunday after morning service, the blind brother, he's been there a long time, Brother Brown, you would never guess that he never met Brother Brown in, 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 in Texas. He's been there about 30 years or 40 years. But, but he, he called me one Sunday evening. That's a brother in church. After morning service, he called me, Brother Hubbard. I said, yeah, bro, how you doing? He said, man, I'm just mad. What's wrong with that preacher? That preacher, bro. I said, the preacher? Well, yeah, you know, that, that girl got pregnant and had a baby. He up there for the church, and we go pray for the brother and pray, pray for the baby. All he's doing is encouraging the girls to go out there and get pregnant. All he's doing is, is talking that he's making it seem like it was a good thing. The girl got pregnant in it, and she's going to never got pregnant in the first place. I said, well, brother, I said, well, have you talked to him? So no, no. I said, well, you ought to, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, you need to call brother, call the brother preacher. I got to serve in the Sunday night. I went to the preacher. I said, did Brother Brown talk to you recently? He said, no. I said, Brother Brown didn't talk to you. <laughs> Do you know what Brother Brown never did? He never called me back. <laughs> he never again called me with any more mess. Because I ain't no garbage can. If somebody comes to you with an issue, the Bible says you're supposed to revoke one another. As you see that they're approaching, uh, provoke one another to love and to get worse. You know what provoke means? <whistles> irritate. All right. I'm supposed to irritate you <laughs> to love for better. I just can't stand. I just can't, I just can't stand with y'all, man. I can't stand them looking all sharp. Bring all the pretty girls with them, man. I can't stand it. <laughs> Bring the one, the one, the one. <laughs> He's standing here, man. That's all right, man. We we'll talk to him. I don't want to talk to him. You got to get to know Charles. You know what I'm like? I don't want to talk to him, huh? And I go talk to you, Charles. Hey, I don't want to talk. You're supposed to, when folk call you with mess about somebody else, that way we need to talk to them. Why do you talk to them? Because you've got a problem with them. Well, you know, they know I got a problem with them. It's amazing how we think everybody can read our minds. I passed by you. I didn't shake your hand. I know you knew that man got a problem with you. I can't read your mind, baby. If you got something in your mind, you ought to say it. The Bible says, speak in the truth in love. I ain't just saying it any kind of way. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I got an issue with you. You better get straight. I ain't saying talk any kind of way for you. But I'm advocating you ought to speak the truth in love. Amen. If you got an issue with somebody, the Bible suggests the idea you ought to take the time and say, let's talk about it. Let's work it out. Right. Inside the family of God, it ought not to ever be the case. You walk around here and you ducking folk. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, thank God, I'm sure none of y'all ducked about over here. <laughs> but there are people who actually come to worship God and act like when they worship God, they don't have to have fellowship with their brother and with their sister. All right, now, say that. You don't know, 35 years ago, <laughs> 35 years ago, I loved that brother 35, that was 35 years ago. <laughs> he ain't never even mentioned him, 35 dollars. Do you know I'd have had interest on him, 35 dollars? <laughs> ain't that big, baby? I love them so much. They ain't never paid me. It, ain't that, it wasn't never your money. 